this is the 19th time, 19th time we've done Coachella Festival, Rat Sound, and it's grown quite a bit over the years. The challenges at Coachella is it's massive distances between the stages, the massive amount of people, and the demand for quality and consistency that we hold to ourselves too, as well as the a Golden Voice expects. I think for any live sound reinforcement venue or uh, situation, you know, low frequency is the key to connecting the artist with the audience physically, to be able to feel the sound, not only hear what's being said and the quality of the songs, but to actually feel the impact that kind of brings everybody, gets everybody in the same rhythm. The Sahara Tent, this year it's bigger, it's 50% larger. Now it's 300 feet by 300 feet. And so to cover this was a, a logistical complexity. We couldn't put anything on the floor. Everything is flown up into the rigs, into the lighting truss. So we, we spent quite a bit of time and energy doing predictions until we got to a point to be able to cover this. So we put a very uh, well-designed, comprehensive acoustic system in here and then having the super subs in addition. We don't want the subwoofer systems to conflict. We've time aligned them and phase aligned them so that they're complementary in their response. Uh, in addition to that, the super subs offer something, it augments, it brings more out of it. The super subs have uh, an extremely high output below 30 cycles and all the way down to 23 cycles. So once the system is all up and running, the super subs are complementary to the SB and KS28 in the, let's say, 30 to 60 or 30 to 80 range. And, but below 30, the super subs really come into play and, and uh, bring out additional low frequencies that are extremely difficult to reach with any other subwoofer system out there. The super subs not only go really low, but they're surprisingly effective at the higher frequencies. For this, we're crossing them over at 80 cycles and below with usable output up to 100, 100 hertz. And they actually can be a direct double 18 replacement. Um, in order to do so, interestingly, you actually have to roll off the low end a bit because they're so good at doing the low end, 30 cycles. Not only is a double 18 replacement, but there's so much magnetic strength, they are faster and hit harder than any double 18 speaker or 21 inch speaker I've ever heard. Because why was the kick drum so loud on the super subs compared to the bass? I thought the super subs were making the kick too loud or they were making the bass too quiet. And what was happening is they're actually the same volume. We as engineers are used to turning the kick drum up to compensate for the lack of transient response in a normal double 18 box. And the motor of these super subs is so powerful, it maintains that transient response and it forces you as an engineer to rethink the way you mix and actually pull the kick drum back to the same level. If you mix shows, I guarantee your kick drum and your bass guitar send to the subs, the kick drum send to the sub is louder than your bass guitar send to the subs. And with the M Force, with these uh, super subs, you set them about the same. Uh, so that was a, a unique learning experience. They have a sound that is unique and they're different in the fact that they don't, what they don't have is that long resonant low end, that that you get. So if you're looking for a really resonant sub, they're not gonna do well. If you're looking for a very transient sub, they do well. So. It's a trade-off and there's different tools for different jobs. So as we're pushing the limits of coverage or trying striving for new heights in coverage and, and consistency throughout the venue, and we're striving for new heights in creating localization of sound, all of this centers around pushing the audio experience to a new level. And as we do that, extending the high frequency response clarity, another aspect is to extend the low frequency response clarity and to take that low frequency energy to new levels and go below 
anything that's gone before. Theoretically, if you go low enough, you can give people the anxiety of an earthquake impending, or you can give people the, create sensations of fear, or sensations of rocking boats, or rolling waves, or big wave crashing. There's these low frequency components that exist in nature, which are extremely difficult to recreate in a live situation. Um, and though they don't apply to every artist, having them available to propagate, I believe is a, another useful way to have people come into a show and walk away with, I've never heard that before, I've never experienced that, and giving them something new. And uh, that's one of the things that, one of the things that we're striving for, and uh, in many ways, not only in coverage and quality, but in the low frequency experience. The super subs are an aspect of that. With the L acoustic stuff, we have multiple cardioid setups where we'll take uh, three subs forward, one back, and we have uh, multiple pods of those underneath the stage in a, in a delayed arc setup. The super subs are quite unique in that they have a natural rejection behind them. Even in non-cardioid, non-end fire mode, if you just take a block of super sub and set them up, they have quite a bit of low frequency reduction behind. Very loud in front and very quiet behind. So running them in a cardioid mode is not as important or necessary. So the super subs are set up in a block of eight, four wide, two high, a center cluster with one, one wide, two high, and then another block of eight, four wide, two high, forming 18. And a slight delay on the outer ones versus the center. We have uh, very little low end. As we walk around, um, you'll hear that uh, there's not a lot of low end coming off the back of them, even not in cardioid. Uh, they do have a cardioid setting for them where we can turn every other one around backwards and run them either end fire or uh, gradient cardioid mode. In gradient cardioid mode, they're almost silent behind. You can't even hear them. Uh, my inspiration for designing the Super Sub came from seeing the M-Force motor product. I had been working for quite some time with designing speakers around metal tubes, using metal tubes and wooden tubes uh, in loudspeaker design and seeing the M4's product and then seeing some enclosures that have been built out of that product, I felt that I could do something special with this. After Kurt showed it to me, I was like, I'm gonna build, I'm gonna build a sub out of this. It solves a lot of the challenges, design challenges. So what makes it unique? The rigidity of the box. The fact that the m Force is mounted in this wooden X, it's, it's almost like a wooden I-beam or a U-beam and it's so structurally strong that the, the motor has almost no motion and that, that X is mounted into a tube. And if you look at a high pressure gas line or a high pressure water line, they're all in these tubes because a tube won't expand or contract. You could take inch and a half thick plywood and mount a speaker in it, it still will vibrate. But if you take and mount a speaker in a metal tube, the amount of expansion and contraction will be fractions of a millimeter instead of, you know, half an inch or, you know, a centimeter. So by putting it in the tube and then using the, putting the tube in a square box and making the ports the corners, I could get really, really long ports in a very rigid enclosure. So I was able to get, combine rigidity and long port length to create a bandpass enclosure that uh, had some aspects of a transmission line with the long distance between the rear of the cone and the output of the cabinet. The super subs in size are 32 inches by 32 inches by 42 inches. They're approximately about one and a quarter times, about 25% larger, so they're within 25% of the size of a, 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 a double 18, most of the double 18s out there. One super sub has the output of two to three. If you multiply that ratio out, and since they're self-powered, including amp racks, we see about a 50% truck space savings. It takes about half the truck space conventional double 18 system. You know, as a rental vendor, that has its advantages to uh, reducing truck space and to be able to have a little more freedom in using up that valuable real estate on stage and under stage. That's uh, one of the things that we're counting on being a tremendous advantage. Bring less, get louder.